Hi, and thank you for joining us today on Road to Recovery. I'm your host, Rhonda Jackson, serial entrepreneur and small business advocate. And today joining me is Michael Richardson, the Equal Opportunity Officer and Project Labor Agreement Manager for Skanska Civil West. Welcome, Michael. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, no, no problem. Um, today's conversation, I'm so excited to begin this because you are a pillar in many communities throughout South Central Los Angeles, as well as in a key role that impacts the diversity and inclusion on projects, the uh, use of local hire and workforce, and then how that kind of circles back to us just as a community, just everyday folks. So this episode of Road to Recovery is not just for our emerging and established entrepreneurs, but it's for the community. So this is what I'm gonna call the community episode. So So, so those of us that aren't as familiar with you and your wonderful work here, will you tell us a little bit about yourself and Skanska? Well, um, my responsibility at Skanska is to ensure that we have people have access to our employment opportunities, right? We want to make sure that we're meeting all of the goals on the project, such as 40% targeted workers, 20% apprentices. 10% disadvantage and that 10% disadvantage is calculated by hours. So we want to ensure that we're leaving a big footprint, right, in the community that we're building in, right, and that's my responsibility to ensure that we have equal access for people in the community, whether it be small businesses or local hires. Very nice. And from what I know of Skanska and your track record, Mark, you guys are making wonderful, wonderful strides in those directions. So appreciate and thank you for your work and efforts. That's so wonderful. So one of the ways that I like to start the show is I like to ask my guests one word that they would use to describe now. What would your word be? Horrible. Uh, pardon me? <laughs> Horrible. Okay, say more. Say more. Well, for me, it's the big picture, right? You know, um, COVID, the gang violence, the impact of COVID on our community at large, the impact on business owners, uh -huh. right? The employees that can't go to work every day and, you know, the hardship that it's causing. So this is a horrible time, but it's a recoverable time. And that's kind of what actually that is the discussion for today is how do we take those horrible, those traumatic, those, you know, um, very, very impressionable times that we have from young to old and move towards social recovery. Right. And so in some of our pre talks, you had some really, really impactful contributions to what that conversation could look like. So what would you say would be one of those things that could move us towards social recovery. Well, one thing that we really have to do is get the shot. Oh, and okay. Educated about the shot. You know, the CDC says that 75% of us have to take the shot for it to be effective, okay. right? But moving on beyond the shot, right, we have to support all of the mom and pop shops, small businesses. So, okay, so before we move on to small businesses, because I love that and I think that's a great point, um, educating us on the shot, are you seeing um, an impact or any influence of that on the job sites? Because you have very, you know, concentrated work sites with, you know, hundreds of people working at a time. Well, we're not eligible yet, right, to get the shots, right? But we have discussions, you know, we want to have that open dialogue with our craft workers and office staff, you know, and we want to give them information, right, and they decide what's best for them, yes. right, but I always believe that education through education, you will make a good decision if you understand it, right, and if you don't understand something, ask questions, yes. right. But get the information that if you hear a story, you know, every time that story is told, it's going to change. Yes. So that creates fear, right, within our community, right? So what we want to do, if our people have questions, we want to have the information for them. We don't want to tell them it's right or wrong. We just want to give them information and how it can protect you and your family. 
Right, but I like that because it sounds like you guys are taking a very proactive approach to providing that information and just at least distributing it so right. people are, are informed. And then I like your other point about getting the information. So one of the things that we like to say here on the road to recovery is information plus implementation equals transformation, right? right. So you change minds, you change thinking and, and people's habits and their action behind it. But now the juicy topic, you brought up a really, really wonderful point of our small business participation. So can you talk a little bit more about uh, small business engagement? Is Are there first steps? Are there areas that we could look for that in? Well, for, for staff there, we have um, a bunch, not a bunch of stuff going on right now that we're bidding, but we have uh, some flooring, some terrazzo that's coming out next quarter, uh, asphalt paving, um, miscellaneous concrete and permanent striping, um, tunnel lighting, operation signage, station furnishing, right? And if anybody is interested in any of these opportunities, they can go to Compliance LA at scanska.com, send us an email, and we'll, um, we're happy to share the information and the bidding opportunities with them. Okay, so then I will, down below next to the subscribe button in the description box, include that link uh, to your email. And I'll also go back and list some of those opportunities that you said are available. And again, sounds like Scanska is taking a very proactive approach to community involvement, you know, what's happening in the world. And I think that's really big of companies when they don't um, insulate themselves from what's happening on the outside, that they take proactive uh, approaches within the organization. So that's big kudos to you guys for doing yeah, that. And, and, you know, and I really appreciate that from Casca. You know, we they hired a third party, like, you know, we have an 800 number. So like, you know, craft workers um, want information about COVID and what have you. They've hired a third party, a professional organization who is, um, familiar with all the new regulations and what have you and any of our um people can go out and um get the information right you know we give them these cards and the cards are in english and spanish right so we're, we're trying to make sure that we're supporting our workers and you know <clears throat> being a good partner to the community and to our workers. I love that. I like that being a good partner to the community. And so then I think you've actually touched on our, the third biggest point to transformation, right? So partners in the community, I know that there's some work that you have a passion for that you've been contributing. Can you talk a little about community involvement and how that could lead to social recovery? Well, for me, uh, social justice is just um, critical. And when I say social justice, I don't mean just police reform. I mean community reform, right? Uh, it, it, it always amazes me when we talk about social justice and all we see is police killing. I want our community to think about all those other people who weren't killed by the police, who were killed by other community members, right? And be just as outraged, yeah. just as outraged well, maybe even more outrage yeah. because it's happening so frequently within our communities, right? And I hope you don't mind if I plug something right here. On February 27th in the city of Compton, we're doing an outreach resource in small groups all over the city, right? Giving out resources, mental health. Um, we have uh, increased the peace. They're offering mental health services. We have the work source centers coming out offering internships to youth. Um, uh, I mean, it's a lot of different services like and it. intervention. So we want the people to come out their homes on February 27th. If you reside in the city of Compton, come out and uh, it's just a peace building day. We want everybody to talk about peace. We want the parents to talk to their kids about peace and love, right? You know, and jobs, we're offering jobs. We have companies uh, Winter offered 10 um, training spots for 10 women in, um, in the city of Compton. Yeah, yeah, in the construction field. I know that Winters is really active with getting women involved in construction. But wait, right. I'm going to pause again. Time out. So these peace conversations, these community, I'm going to call it a rally for lack of a better word right now, but these community rallies in safe distance, you know, clusters is what it sounds like to me, is that you're initiating the change in the community. 
you're initiating it, right? You're giving a platform, you're giving a voice to that type of reform and having that type of peace. I think that's wonderful because that to me sounds like you're taking away the us against them, right? The community against the police and you're creating the we. You're creating the opportunity to have that, that back and forth dialogue. But also what I heard you say is that communities can take ownership for themselves. Exactly. You know, I, I, I tell people, you can't wait for anybody to save you. If you're not willing to make the effort to save yourself, then you're doomed. Right. So we have to empower the residents. Right. We have to have community policing. Right. That means working in collaboration with the local police departments, with the local municipalities, with the residents. It has to be a partnership. And as you know, any effective, effective partnership, everybody wins. Yeah, it's a destiny win. So I have another one for you, Michael. We call it the win, W-H-E-N, win, W-I-N, right? And it sounds like the win-win in this instance is now, but specifically on February 27th. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that event. So again, if you don't mind, if anyone is looking for more of this information or a best way to contact you, will you tell us the best way to do that? Um, and they can contact me at profitable and useful at gmail.com. The and is spelled out A and B, but it's okay. profitable and useful at gmail.com. No, thank you for all the knowledge. Thank you for all the investment. That's what I'm going to call what today's conversation really was. So even with the, um, the information and education on the vaccination, we've got participating and supporting our small businesses, right, from various levels, ordering out, you know, participation on projects, but then also the community involvement, the really, you know, stepping out of your front, off your front porch and into the world that kind of bonds us closer together. Do you have one actionable thing that anybody within the sound of your voice should do today? What would that one thing be? Oh, one thing. One thing. Mm -hmm. Think of it as us and not them, okay. right? Be part of something positive, right? And just show love to your neighbor, right? You know, support one another. Yeah. Right. I don't care what's going on. We all at times just need a helping hand, whether it's a conversation, whether it's a few pennies, right? Support one another, right? Let's stop color lines, let's stop gang lines. Like right? money, right? We all can get money, right? If we support one another. Mm -hmm. I love that. And thank you for being that first hand, that olive branch to start these conversations among many, I'm sure. And please, I would love to invite you back as these things develop and mature and become more, you know, more useful in other organizations and other communities. So thank you again for joining us today, Michael. No, I want to thank you. This is amazing, right? What you're doing, right? You're educating our community on the ways to recover, right? You are a ma an amazing woman and I appreciate you and keep doing what you're doing, right? We need this voice. We need your voice. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate you. Thanks for joining us today. You're welcome.